Thank you for participating in this panel on aviation sectors transition to net zero. Um, aviation sector panel, um, this panel is going to focus on the aircraft operators decarbonization effort. Uh, it actually represents about 2% of global um, CO2 emissions. My name is Saori Takahashi from Financial Services Agency, and I'm today's uh, moderator for you. Um, this panel is not is not going to make a judgment of which scenario is good or bad, but the panel tries to show a constructive dialogue between the industry and the financial sector on which aspect of pathway that investors look at and how the funding necessity can be uh, filled. So first, I would like to go into um, introduce the um, distinguished panelists today. Uh, from my left-hand side, uh, Mr. Yuji Fujiwara from International Air Transport Association. Um, and Mr. Karsam, who is also from IATA, is going to um, participate in this, in this panel as a supporting role. And next, uh, Mr. Hajime Yoshimura from Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism. And at the end, um, Ms. Noriko Gawa from Japan Airlines. And on virtually, uh, Mr. Pierre Bryans from BNP Paribas and Mr. Sami Yaohainen from Neste are going to also participate in this panel. So um, I would like to get into the um, first section of the panel, which is going to focus on the pathways and scenarios by industry and um, also the um, governments. So currently, uh, we understand that various hot air bait sectors are trying to develop a pathway to net zero, and even individual companies are struggling to develop a scenario. Aviation sector managed to develop the global level pathway and scenario. So I would like to ask the three panelists uh, presenting um, today uh, about what were the motivation to, to develop a scenario or pathway and what did it look like? So first, I would like to hand it over to Fujiwara-san to present um, the pathway from my data. Fujiwara-san, please. Uh, th thank you, Takahashi-san. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuji Fujiwara, Japan Country Manager of International Air Transport Association. IATA is a airline industries association consisted of 209 member airlines. At IATA annual general meeting held last year, October, the airlines has made a historical goal to set net zero by 2050. According to our forecast, the number of the passenger in 2050 will exceed 10 billion in 2050 from 2 billion in 2021. The expected carbon emission in those uh, period from 2021 to 2050 is estimated around 21.2 gigatons. I prepared the chart on the screen. The, um, the, this chart shows the journey to achieve the net zero by 2050. The chart is developed in consideration of the um, availability of each solution and the amount of CO2 abatement. X axis here shows the uh, timeline and the um, amount of the CO2 abatement in each five years increment. The chart intend to all stakeholders to help all stakeholders to um, in, uh, to all stakeholder, including the state, to understand the pathway to net zero, and to recognize their responsibility and accountability, and finally to establish the roadmap and the action plan. Net zero objective will be met through a combination of several solutions as shown on the chart. Green one is the uh, improvement of the op operational efficiency. Red one is the uh, technology, uh, new technology like um, uh, hydrogen engine aircraft. 
yellow portion is the uh, South Sustainable Aviation Fuel, and gray one is the uh, CCUS, and blue one is offset. In the next couple of years, the uh, blue portion, which is offsetting, is relatively big because of, of the SAC production is limited. The, in 2021, the SAC production was 100 million liters, and uh, the production of SAC in 2025 will grow to 7.9 billion liters. The clear message here is that SAC is expected to do the heavy lifting and will expand the uh, uh, production from 2035 and onwards. In 2050, we need 450 billion liters of SAC to achieve the net zero. And, uh, 450 million billion liters consists of the 65% um, of the CO2 abatement needed. Net zero cannot be achieved by airlines alone. We need the contribution from various stakeholders, including the government, air navigation service providers, airport, uh, aircraft and engine manufacturers, and oil industries, and investors. Thank you. Thank you, Fujiwara. And I thought it was really unique that actually industry association took the initiative to develop a pathway or scenario. Um, next, I would like to ask Yoshimura-san to sort of provide an overarching perspective um, about um, ICAO's activity as well as the um, Japan's. Uh, uh, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. takahashi uh, So uh, before presenting my presentation, so I just would like to introduce uh, ICAO, uh, International Civil Aviation Organization, briefly. So uh, ICAO, we call, uh, was established in 1947 uh, as a specialized agency of United Nations. Its headquarters uh, resides in Montreal, uh, Canada. ICAO is funded and directed by uh, 193 uh, national governments as signatory states to the Chicago Convention. The objective of ICAO is to develop international civil aviation in a safe and orderly manner by developing and promoting implementation of international standards. And ICAO's strategic objectives are safety, air navigation capacity and efficiency, security and facilitation, economic development of air transport, and environmental protection. ICAO also closely collaborate with industry groups such as IATA, Airlines Group, ICCIA, uh, aircraft manufacturers, and uh, ACI, uh, Airport uh, Council of International, uh, etc. And regarding environment protection, historically, ICAO uh, has developed international standards for restricting engine noise, emissions such as uh, NOx and smoke. Then, uh, to respond to global climate change, ICAO has adopted in 2010 uh, global midterm goal for CO2 reduction from international civil aviation. This midterm goal is that first, fuel efficiency improvement by 2% annually. Secondly, not increasing total emissions after 2020. To achieve this goal, ICAO established a carbon offset reduction scheme called Colisea. And also, ICAO established CO2 emission standards 
for aircraft engine, whose uh, development was uh, led by uh, Japan, actually. And currently, ICAO is in the process of, for developing a global, global long-term aspirational goal called LTAG for CO2 reduction for the ICAO General Assembly, which will be held this uh, fall. As one of the process, ICAO has established a task group in 2020 to examine a feasibility of uh, this LTAG, and I am a chair of this uh, task group. And uh, this task group consists of four subgroups, as you can see on the right, right, right uh, graph, such as technologies, operations, fuels, and scenarios. And more than 300 experts from various regions and the industry uh, participated. And the group recently completed its final report after two years' intensive discussions basically all uh, online. The next slide shows the main takeaway from this report. So the group developed three scenarios based on readiness, attainability, and level of effort. IS-1, you can see on the uh, uh, top, represent require lower efforts. IS-3, on the right side, represents requires higher efforts. And IS-2 IS is the middle between IS-1 and IS-3. The analysis was conducted to compare the CO2 emissions reductions with and without taking actions. For example, in IS-1, CO2 emissions increase as traffic volume increases. Then CO2 emissions are reduced by technology, operation, and fuel measures. And you can see in 2050, the estimated CO2 emissions is 954 megaton CO2, which is 160% of 2019 level. And cumulative CO2 emissions from 2020 to 2050 is 23 gigaton CO2, which can be compared to 400 gigaton CO2. This, was, this is supposed to achieve uh, Paris Agreement's 1.5 degrees Celsius. So it's a few percent of the portion. IS-3 estimates 203 megaton CO2 in 2050 and which is 35% of 2019 level. But as I want to emphasize that, it requires a higher effort, collaboration among government, industry. And finally, I would like to introduce the work of aviation decarbonization in Japan. So for the adoption of the AirTag, at the next ICAO assembly this fall, Japan is collaborating with other countries to make the goal as much as aspirational and well harmonized. In domestic aviation sector, decarbonization is conducted under the plan for global warming countermeasures. And finally, I would like to introduce about our, char our <clears throat> challenges about the sustainable aviation fuel SAF. MLIT has established a target of replacing 10% replacing of the fuel consumption by Japanese airlines with SAF in 2030. And Japanese government subsidized technical development of SAF utilizing green innovation funds. And recently, the MLIT established private-public conference to promote the introduction of SAF with related ministries, oil companies, and airlines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoshimura-san. Um, I just have a brief yes or no question, um, and also um, give you a little bit of note um, that um, 
actually, international aviation is not included a Paris Agreement um, reduction target. And did, did that work as a motivation to sort of develop the a scenario or do the study in ICAO? Was that true or is it yes or no? I think, I think the answer is yes. So we recognize this uh, Paris Agreement 1.5 degrees. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Yoshimura-san. I would like to hand it over to Ogawa-san to um, present. Thank you, Takahashi-san. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Noriko Ogawa from Japan Airlines. Thank you for giving me such an opportunity to um, introduce our pathway to roadmap um, uh, net zero emission by 2050. So um, this is our pathway. We usually call it a uh, roadmap to net zero emission by 2050. In June 2020, at our stockholders meeting, our president announced net zero emission by 2050. This was his strong will to announce net zero emission, even if it was right in the middle of the COVID-19 epidemic and it was hard to see how the business goes. And in May 2021, Upon releasing midterm business plan, this roadmap was made into a public. Um, the dotted line on the top uh, gray one shows a CO2 emission based on the assumption of 1.4% annual growth rate with the current trend of equipment composition, fuel, and so on. At this rate, we will be emitting about 12 million tons of CO2 per year in 2050. The solid green line on the bottom uh, is a target for our uh, CO2 emission. The right-hand side of this chart uh, show how JAL aimed to achieve net zero emission by 2050. The blue part, 50%, by upgrading to fuel efficient aircraft such as Airbus A350, or Boeing 787. This also includes uh, hydrogen aircraft, which is mid or small size aircraft, uh, which we expect to be available after 2035. And the yellow part shows the 5% um, uh, daily operation efforts. And 45% on the green part is uh, reduced by sustainable aviation fuel, what we call SAF. This page shows how our further detailed plan of the uh, CO2 reduction by 2030 and the progress towards the net zero emission by 2050. In 2021, the total emission was 6.2 million tons. This was due to the number of flights was limited because of the pandemic. The introduction of fuel, uh, fuel efficient aircraft such as A350s and ATRs, and further operational efforts contributed to 1.5% reduction, which was approximately 0.1 million tons. In 2025, JAL aims to reduce the total emission below 9.09 .09 million tons, which was the actual emission level of fiscal year 2019. And by fiscal year 2030, JAL aims to keep the total emission below 8.18 million ton, which is 10% less than fiscal year 2019 level. We also plan to load SAF about 10% of total fuel consumption by 2030. Uh, let me please talk about SAF situation briefly. Um, this is a shortage uh, this is a, a chart of how we plan to have a SAF on board by 2030. And um, uh, the right-hand side shows 10%. The, and, and then there is a shortage, gray part is a shortage compared to the uh, required amounts to achieve the target. So it is necessary to accelerate the development of SAF, which ensure large-scale supply to reduce the cost and market it, make it feasible. Um, so I will introduce some of our initiatives. 
So Gel has invested to um, Fulcrum Bioenergy, one of the manufacturers of SAF made for munis- municipal waste in US since 2018. Um, you can see the photo on the, pot- uh, on the bottom and right, very right hand side is a photo of the plant of uh, Fulcrum in US. And we also working with the partners of One World Alliance that we plan to jointly purchase SAF from Amethyst and Jibo, both of them are companies in US. And also in Japan, establishing a solid SAF supply in, uh, chain is the most important issue, and uh, there is no SAF manufacturer, manufacturers in Japan at the moment. So we recognize that we should load domestically produced SAF for flights depart from Japan rather than using transported from outside of Japan in order to avoid further CO2 emission. In order to enhance the use of SAF, we had the first flight loading Japan's first domestically made SAF produced from used clothes in February 2021. The picture is uh, second from the right, and I think the very left one is the one when we loaded that uh, SAF. And also, um, we also conducted the very first flight uh, with the two different types of SAF produced domestically in Japan, loaded at the same time. This is a part of a development of production technologies for biofuel of new energy and industrial technology development organization. The road to net zero emission by 2050 is not an easy one. However, Joe will work on and make effort to achieve this through the collaboration with stakeholders to pass on our precious earth to the next generation. Thank you. Thank you, Ogawa-san. So um, after the presentation from the industry and then the government, I would like to bring um, Mr. Um, Pierre Bryans um, on board um, on um, his aspect on transition finance. So um, Pierre-san, I would like to um, provide um, your sort of reaction to what you have seen um, um, through panelists' presentation, um, especially on aspects of um, you know, um, how to evaluate the pathway or scenario from um, financial organizations' perspective. Thank you very much, uh, Takahashi-san. Um, first of all, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, it's a great honor to be part of this uh, distinguished uh, panel. I was uh, really heartened to see the presentation of uh, my distinguished panelists uh, that shows all actors of the industry are very aware and focused on the uh, issue of decarbonizing uh, the, um, the, the sector. For us as a bank, uh, first of all, I would say that on the pathway itself, uh, we do not have uh, a lot of uh, say. We are not at the heart of it. We are here to accompany uh, this uh, this trajectory, this, this journey. Uh, aviation is a capex heavy industry uh, from the start. And uh, it is clear that uh, all that is required to achieve net zero by 2050 will require uh, a lot of capital. Uh, and therefore, I think where we can help is to uh, bring about uh, that uh, capital uh, for the industry players to realize their ambitions. As a bank, and we are not the only one, many banks have done so, uh, we have uh, uh, signed up to the Net Zero Banking Alliance commitments. And as part of our commitment, we will start uh, measuring and disclosing the uh, scope to emission of our finance portfolio. And that will include aviation. And we have launched an initiative with five other banks uh, to come up with a methodology and a roadmap uh, to do that uh, as soon as possible and to set a standard uh, to disclose those emissions. And that will hopefully create a level playing field uh, among the banks as to what is the right way to measure uh, emission, to disclose them, as well as to choose the right a pathway to, to net zero by uh, 2050. Uh, one thing I would say on this as well is that 
we are quite clear in our mind that uh, we have to have a pathway, we have to have a target, and I think the final target is very clear. The pathway itself has been very well illustrated uh, by my colleagues on the on the panel, uh, but I would probably uh, add that it is likely to change uh, as we go through times and overshoot on certain targets, perhaps sadly undershoot on some others, we will need to adapt and we will need to reevaluate constantly this, uh, this roadmap. And I think uh, as a bank, uh, what we will help to do is to facilitate exchanges and uh, thinking and uh, ways to uh, constantly uh, have everyone up to date as to what is the optimal pathway to uh, achieve the target. Well, thank you very much. It was a very um, thorough sort of explanation of, you know, how you see the activities happening right now. So um, I would like to Ogawa-san and Yoshimura-san to provide just a very probably one minute <laughs> response to the, um, what um, Pierre-san has just said. Okay. Um, yeah, first, so thank you very much for a very uh, excellent uh, uh, response. So. Uh, First, I uh, would like also supplement my explanation that so you can see in the previous my slide that uh, so I say like a, a thirty five percent uh, compared to the to the uh, 20, 2019 level, uh, and uh, IKO assembly is going to uh, discuss and uh, hopefully I hope that to adapt uh, some aspirational uh, goal to achieve in twenty fifty. So, and also uh, the report of uh, the long-term aspiration goal task group also include, includes the cost estimation uh, to achieve uh, the goal, uh, which is described in uh, IS 1, 2, 3. So the, <clears throat> the cost is uh, in detail and uh, its uh, uh, magnitude is like trillion uh, dollars uh, level. But, uh, so, and also, I also agree that uh, the goal and the roadmap uh, should be uh, devised uh, as necessary uh, as the climate change station uh, change in the future. So, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Ogawa-san, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, well, as you mentioned, yes, we were always ready to uh, re-evaluate what we are planning at the moment uh, based on uh, what the te new technologies and um, environment, what we face. And uh, we, I also want to uh, introduce our uh, initiatives to the net zero emission financial part of, uh, points of view. Uh, JAL has issued a world first transition bond in the aviation industry in Mar this March. And uh, uh, we had a second opinion, a second party opinion obtained from Sustainalistics a global third-party assessment organization. This is used for the upgrading to fuel efficient aircraft, such as, as I mentioned, Air, Airbus A330 and Boeing 787. And the term is five years, and we issue the amount of 10 billion yen. So we are investing. And then um, we also intend to keep annual reporting to the stakeholders that our progress on our climate transition strategy with the disclosure of climate-related impact, including scope one, two, and three CO2 emission in our integrated report or website. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, well, after this, so this, um, this kind of interaction between the industry and the um, financial organization is um, so great so that we could sort of um, have a mutual understanding of the current status, um, honest opinions and dialogue between the two. Um, hopefully those dialogues and engagement would help increase uh, the, so the, um, the credibility and the confidence of the market. Thank you very much, that was really good. Um, so um, next focus of, um, of this panel is going to be the um, SAF, Sustainable Aviation Fuel. And this aspect, as presented by the previous um, presentations, you know, is a key um, to um, provide a confidence in the market um, and also the credibility of the pathway. And um, I would like to this time bring um, Sammy-san from um, Neste. Um, 
um, to explain what is the current status of SAC business um, development in Asia and in Japan, and um, what are the challenges? Thank you, Takahashi-san. Uh, I'm very pleased of the opportunity to join this uh, to join this forum and, uh, and to share views uh, from Neste on aviation's decarbonization and the, and the role of sustainable aviation fuels in, in achieving that. So Neste is a global producer of uh, renewable and circular solutions, and we have been supplying the uh, aviation markets with uh, sustainable aviation fuels since 2019. Um, many of our customers include uh, some of the leading uh, airlines in the world, in Europe, North America, and in the Asia-Pacific region. And we are also supplying our products to many fuel suppliers and oil companies, helping to grow the availability of the product uh, in the markets. Uh, in the Asia-Pacific uh, markets and in Japan, we made our first uh, supply of sustainable aviation fuel in October 2020, when we supplied uh, SAF to ANA of Japan uh, in collaboration with, uh, with the Itochu Corporation. And since then, uh, we have expanded our collaboration with uh, Itochu uh, to make sustainable aviation fuels continuously available at the Haneda and Narita airports uh, both to Japanese airlines, uh, visiting carriers, as well as oil companies operating in, in Japan. Um, we are today uh, the world's largest producer of sustainable aviation fuels. Our total uh, production capacity amounts today to around 100,000 tons. That's roughly equal to 125 uh, million uh, liters. And we are looking to grow that uh, by 15-fold to 1.5 million tons already by end of next year, when our ongoing investments in Singapore and Rotterdam are completed. And especially Singapore will, be, will play an important role for us uh, starting from uh, Q1 2023. We will have a million tons of sustainable aviation fuel capacity available in Singapore to serve the Japanese market, the Asia-Pacific aviation markets, as well as our customers globally with increasing volumes of the product. But of course, even though the availability of SAF is, is increasing rapidly for the aviation industry, much more will be needed. And uh, I think that that's what uh, was mentioned earlier in the presentations was that sustainable aviation fuel is the, is the main lever for, for aviation to achieve its uh, long-term emission reduction targets. IATA, for example, has estimated that 65% of the, of the emission reductions to, required by 2050 need to arise from the use of sustainable aviation fuels. And if looking at the roadmap uh, towards achieving those targets, uh, we would typically say that that requires realization of three phases. And, and the first phase here is take about taking the kind of solutions and sustainable aviation fuel production technologies that are already commercial today into their full potential. So the kind of raw materials we use today for producing sustainable aviation fuels include various waste and residue types of uh, oils and fats such as used cooking oils, animal waste fats, we are estimating that the total availability in the world of, of these raw materials is around 40 million tons. And we are continuously improving our supply chains for waste collection, as well as our technologies to pre-treat these raw materials to increase their availability for our production. And even though 40 million tons is significant relative to global uh, jet fuel consumption, which was around 300 million tons uh, before the pandemic, it is certainly alone not enough. So while we scale up the solutions that are available today, we also need to invest in the future. And, and if looking at those pathways, the next phase in the time frame of around five to 10 years is about taking raw materials uh, 
such as lignocellulosic raw materials, that is various agricultural and forest residues, as well as municipal solid wastes into use. The first pilot plants using these technologies are already being commissioned, and by 2025-2030 horizon, we expect them to play an increasing role. And together with step one, these raw materials already have enough sustainable feedstock potential for aviation's decarbonization needs. But importantly, we are not limited to those after 2030. We also look scalable raw materials such as algae oils and power to liquids, which refers to production of liquid hydrocarbons from captured carbon and renewable hydrogen to play an increasing role. However, the main challenge is, is about cost, because production of sustainable aviation fuels with all of these technologies is expected to remain more expensive than the cost of conventional jet fuel when the full uh, price of emissions caused by burning fossil jet fuel is not priced into the product of that. And, and, and hence, what we will need uh, to unlock the investments in soft production capacity is demand certainty that the market for sustainable aviation fuels is going to be there and that it's going to be growing over the coming years and decades. And this is where governments have an, an important role to play. What governments can do is to set binding requirements for emission reduction for the aviation industry and establish policies that create the market for sustainable solutions. What we are seeing happening in the world at the moment is that such policy frameworks are now spreading um, at an accelerating space. So already countries such as France, uh, Norway and Sweden have binding regulations for a fixed percentage of all jet fuel being used in those countries uh, to be SAF. Uh, European Union and United Kingdom will make such policies uh, Europe-wide uh, by 2025. And we also expect the first countries in Asia-Pacific to follow with similar policies with the same timeline, uh, with the New Zealand probably being the, the frontrunner looking to develop their own SAF mandate uh, in the course of this year and having it forced by 2025. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sami-san. Um, so um, you just um, um, provided some examples of challenges or bottlenecks that's, um, to, to implement the SAF um, into Asia. And I would like to ask your Shimura-san and Ogawa-san to respond um, about the countermeasures that you're going to take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sami-san, for the uh, presentation. Um, so as I have commented in my presentation, there is no soft manufacturer or big plant to supply uh, demand to the at the moment in Japan. And actually, um, also I um, said in my presentation that those agreements made that JAL has made are all manufacturer in U.S. This is because U.S. government supports companies who try to to make the soft plant. So um, we really expect our government also support those movement as well. And in order for that, in October 2021, JAL has developed a joint report towards virtually zero CO2 emission from air transport in 2050 with the aim of expanding awareness and promoting understanding of SAF with all Nippon Airways. This is very, very unique or un unusual that uh, JAL and ANA move together for the same purpose. And furthermore, in March, a voluntary organization working for the commercialization and promotion and expansion and domestically pro produced SAF called Act for Sky. I think this um, Yoshimura-san has also um, com said in, in his presentation was uh, presented, um, sorry, established. Um, collaborating with 16 members, such as JGC Holdings Corporation and Rebel International, and all Nippon Airways, and so on. And finally, I just want to point out that uh, SAF is a very sustainable uh, solution, not only because of the, its production method, but also because of the fuel itself is a very same as a conventional fuel. We can use 
use it uh, with existing infra infrastructure without in additional investment. Thank you. Thank you. Yoshimura-san, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, as in, in your presentation, so uh, in the future, so you will, uh, uh, your company will also develop uh, 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 staff uh, using uh, new technology. So, uh, in the IKO analysis, also uh, consider uh, not only a biomass based fuel, but also a, a gas, air, uh, gas air waste based fuel and also our atmospheric shields based uh, fuels. And uh, uh, the scenario as presented in my uh, previous slide, so uh, IS2 uh, assume that uh, in 2050, all jet fuel uh, will be replaced by SAF. And IS3 uh, is uh, in 2040, all jet fuel will be replaced by SAF. So, uh, and uh, so with, uh, we, we, we estimate, uh, we assess that uh, the technology is available, but uh, we need uh, more investment uh, by the government and the industry uh, to achieve this goal. So, and also as you uh, illustrated that some uh, countries already have some uh, uh, <clears throat> measures uh, to require airlines to use South, I think it's one of the way to uh, implement this but also, I think there are several ways uh, to achieve this goal. And uh, uh, ICAO uh, is in the process now to uh, first uh, uh, decide a long-term special goal. And then uh, ICAO uh, is a focus on uh, how uh, uh, the, the goal can be implemented with a collaboration uh, between among uh, government and industries and the academy as well. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, in order to implement SAF, um, the um, lots of stakeholders, including the financial organization, need to sort of probably participate. Um, and for financial organization, it will be an opportunity side um, as well um, when it comes to the new business innovation. So um, I would like to ask um, Sami San, um, what kind of um, finance? show vehicles um, do you think can be useful for you or um, um, was um, used in the past? So, so for Neste, um, over 90% over of our profits uh, over the past two years have uh, already come from our renewable activities. So, so those, uh, that, what that is doing is, is helping us to, is to finance uh, a significant portion of our, our investments already uh, from operating cash flow. Basis. But what we have also seen is the, is the growing interest towards uh, sustainable finance um, from the investors. And, and what we have considered important for, for Neste uh, to be a front runner in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in kind of the market uh, for sustainable solutions is also to participate in the, in the sustainable finance space. And what we have done in uh, March last year is uh, issued our first uh, green bond uh, together with um, a green finance framework, you know, where we have uh, stipulated uh, the use of proceeds and in what kind of uh, projects uh, we allocate the funding collected from investors uh, from that uh, green bond. I think the, the most important aspect when we started looking at this space was that there's still a uh, um, a lot of work to be done to create more, more standards uh, for this space. And what we found important for us uh, uh, is, to, is to build a credible basis for that kind of sustainable finance and, 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 and tight criteria uh, for those projects where we allocate the, the proceeds. For example, uh, we are using the proceeds only for projects that are building new renewable or circular solution capacity and for example, not using them uh, for projects that just improve, let's say, the carbon footprint in our own uh, uh, fossil uh, oil product facilities. Well, thank you, Sami San. Um, Pierre San, um, would you please explain um, BNP Paribas sort of um, financial vehicles that are currently in use? And Sam, um, Sami San also touched upon his um, green bond, so if you have any comments. Um, that would be appreciated as well. 
Sure. Thank you, uh, Takash. And so, um, as a bank, the way we look at this is uh, uh, several fold, uh, some of which I have mentioned earlier, and I will uh, get back into it in more details. First of all, um, of course, uh, sustainability linked uh, and green financing uh, are very important. Um, they provide an avenue for investors who have uh, that dedicated appetite to support this project to do so. Uh, I completely agree with what uh, Sami said just now that the framework for that uh, needs to be very tight uh, and very clear and must avoid uh, any doubt as to the use of funds and the general framework and the general goals of the of, of the borrowing entity. Um, BNP Paribas is, uh, is one of the leaders uh, worldwide in uh, arranging sustainability linked and, uh, and green financing. Uh, and we just certainly intend to continue uh, doing that, uh, helping both ourselves as a lender, as well as investors uh, to basically find an avenue to support the industry, uh, including, uh, you know, for aviation, wherever that makes sense. Um, the other thing that uh, we do, of course, is uh, to some extent, we also put our own money uh, to work. Uh, so I just spoke about uh, green and uh, sustainable uh, linked financing. Uh, we also uh, can invest ourselves occasionally. We have uh, impact investing teams. We have set up uh, some funds, uh, the BNP Paribas Solar Impulse Funds that was announced uh, about a year and a half ago, um, which are dedicated to invest in new technologies, for example. Uh, and then the last thing that we can do to help is, um, of course, as a uh, a large investment bank, we have very regular um, dialogues with investors. We certainly clearly see a growing appetite uh, for investing in a new technology that help decarbonize the, uh, the economy in general. And uh, of course, that includes uh, aviation. So investment uh, in SAF, in new aircraft technologies, uh, in self-distribution infrastructure are all themes that are of interest uh, to uh, several uh, investors that we that we speak to, and we're always uh, keen to be able to help them connect with uh, industry players who require that funding to progress in uh, in their in their projects. Thank you very much. Um, so the time is running up, but um, it actually flies really quickly. So coming to an end, um, I would like to um, lastly ask every panelist about um, very quickly, maybe um, in, um, in 30 seconds or so, or uh, hopefully um, within a short period of time, um, to um, you know, address the, uh, the um, in order to address the challenges, what, what would you do next? Um, uh, maybe from, um, I guess from Mr. Karasan from Ayata, um, would you start off? Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, so I'm Carl from uh, the Asia, Ayata Asia Pacific office in Singapore. So I think to the your question of uh, what the industry to do next, I think uh, Fujiwara-san has presented uh, the pathway to net zero. And I think there are different uh, factors and uh, different technologies that come into play. So also in, uh, in response to the two questions that were posted, um, I think SAF will definitely have to play the main role. We expect SAF to play 65% in contribution towards the payment of uh, CO2. But we also see that uh, offsetting, carbon offsetting will play an important role as well to take out some of the residual uh, emissions. And um, I think so in response to the question of uh, whether we're being overly optimistic, um, actually, I think as a, as a whole, the industry is actually quite optimistic that we'll be able to achieve our goal towards net zero because um, I think the technology is already there, especially for SAF. And I think to echo what some of the previous speakers have already spoken on, what we really need is for the industry together with investors as well as, as, well as the governments to work together to ramp up uh, production of SAF in order for us to reach our goals. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, 
for your um, commitment and actions. And, um, so from, from uh, I guess, Yoshimura-san, would you like to go next? Okay. Uh, so I just want to uh, highlight the, uh, the mo most important thing is uh, collaboration uh, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and also uh, the transparency and also involvement uh, uh, among uh, uh, stakeholders and also uh, to achieve uh, this goal. And I, I think that uh, uh, the, uh, we are the, uh, living in the same boat and uh, uh, for sustainable uh, uh, civil aviation uh, transportation. So thank you. Okawasan, please. Thank you. So, um, so it's 30 years ahead stuff. So a lot of stuff that we don't know yet or un undecided stuff. So uh, we'd like to work on very grocery to um, collaborate with IATA or ICAO or other international initiatives to make um, rule from involved in the rule making. And uh, we want to uh, approach to the goal smoothly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 I guess, um, Sam, Sam, please. First of all, I, I very much agree with the previous speakers when we are creating a new market uh, collaboration across the, the aviation ecosystem and supply chain is very important. Uh, and that has proven very, very effective when we have been introducing our product uh, already in the, in the Japanese market. I think the second uh, thing I would highlight is the role of governments in, in, in setting direction for the industry. Private companies are then well positioned to provide the needed solutions and, uh, and the global capital markets are, are well positioned to allocate funding. But, but where it starts from, of course, is, is that the regulators uh, set uh, a clear direction for the industry. And maybe the third thing, I, I think we still need uh, globally a, a bit more sense of urgency. Uh, so, so 2050 targets, uh, even though there is a long way to go uh, in order to be able to achieve them, uh, we need to start uh, as soon as possible and, and, and make tangible progress. So, so these three th things I would I would highlight. Thank you. And finally, Pierre San, um, any concluding remarks? Uh, it's going to be uh, difficult to add to everything that's just been said. Uh, I think my colleagues have uh, really covered uh, all the very important aspects. Collaboration, of course. Uh, government support is uh, essential, that's right, I think uh, Sami uh, said that well. Um, and the sense of urgency to that, maybe what I would add is uh, that, uh, and I think this uh, conference and this panel uh, try to achieve that as well, is uh, education uh, of stakeholders and even of the general public uh, as to what are the stakes and what are the ways that we can achieve that as we know them today and uh, help people anticipate that all this will have a cost uh, and so we all need to participate. It's investments, of course, but it is also likely to be an increase of uh, cost structure uh, for the airlines, for the OEMs, and, uh, and that may translate eventually also uh, as a cost for the travelers. And uh, hopefully that is something that can also be uh, understood uh, and supported by everyone. Well, thank you very much. Lots of aspects um, packed in your comments, but um, maybe a little bit of sense of urgency, but um, lots of collaboration um, at present among industry um, um, association, from industry association to financial institutions. So. Um, um, let me thank all the panelists um, present and uh, virtually, and please give a, a big applause to the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you.